Hello, my name is Alexander Sansevieri. Hi, my name is Torun Mohan. Hi, my name is Marvin. And my name's George. We are the fine men, and we are presenting quantum amplitude estimation. Let's get right to it. Quantum computers have some special properties that give them an advantage and sometimes even complete supremacy over classical computers. Superposition is one of these properties. Although measuring or observing a quantum bit or qubit will always result in a one or zero just like classical bits, before being measured a qubit can be in superposition. This means that it can represent a mix of both one and zero at the same time by having different probabilities of being measured as either one or zero something that classical bits can't do. This allows for three or four qubits to store eight or 16 possible states respectively, all at the same time, while classical computers can only store one state at a time. Interference is another property of quantum computers where qubits can interact constructively or destructively with each other, similar to waves so that we can manipulate the probabilities of measuring certain states. By using these advantages of quantum computers, we were able to work on the implementation of a quantum algorithm that is superior to classical algorithms. So the algorithm that we worked on implementing for the past two weeks is called quantum amplitude estimation. To explain the concept of this algorithm clearly, imagine you have a lock and a box of keys, some of which open the lock. Quantum amplitude estimation tells us how likely we are to pick a good key out of the box. Since qubits can represent multiple states simultaneously, it's as if all the keys from the box are put into the lock at the same time. Classical computers must sample every key one at a time. Amplitude estimation isn't only limited to figuring out the probability of picking a key. It has many other applications such as finance, machine learning, and Monte Carlo integration. In terms of finance, imagine that the keys from before were replaced with future spot prices or market prices of assets, and instead of a lock, we have the profit based on the future spot prices. Suddenly, the value of A mentioned before informs us how much money we're expected to make. Additionally, amplitude estimation significantly speeds up Monte Carlo integration, an estimation method useful for option pricing. Amplitude estimation helps evaluate risk measures too. It also makes several machine learning methods quicker, such as the nearest neighbor method. The notable development of quantum amplitude estimation applications is quickly optimizing many classical computer operations. Amplitude estimation has many interesting applications. For our testing, we will be calculating this integral to this bound. Basically, when you do the math out, this is the answer that you want. But that's calculus, and calculus is hard. Instead, think of it like this. We want to calculate the area under this curve so we can add up a bunch of small rectangles under the curve to approximate the area. That's called a Riemann sum. The longer our quantum circuit is, the more rectangles we add and the more precise our estimation becomes. But longer circuits also have more air. If our circuits are too long, our output will be meaningless. To account for this, we tested several different sets of circuits with different lengths. Since current quantum computers deal with a variety of issues, the more gates and qubits you use, the more error prone it is. To see how practical our algorithm is, we found the circuit's width, depth, time to compile, and total number of gates needed. Width is the number of qubits used, and depth is the number of gates used. From this analysis, we can see that Lima takes longer to compile, since it has to convert the circuit into something the quantum machine can understand. This process causes more gates to be added, making it more error prone. An interesting thing we found was that the exponential implementation has less gates, which implies that there should be less error in our results. After running our algorithm on both the AER and the Lima, we created these graphs. Here you can see that for the linear implementation, the AER is accurate over 90% of the time, even as we scale up, but the Lima simulator gets worse as the number of iterations increases. We see the opposite trend for the exponential implementation. The Lima actually performs better or on par in terms of accuracy with the AER. However, we see that as the number of Q operators are increased, the percent error increases dramatically for both simulators. One of the main hurdles we had to face was understanding math-heavy papers about our algorithm. There were little to no circuit diagrams to look at, so we had to go off of the complex math, which we really haven't had much experience with before. In conclusion, we find that the most practical implementation of this algorithm as of right now 
is the exponential algorithm with a single iteration as it has a high accuracy and low number of total gates used. However, since we used a classical computer to simulate these results, we were limited in how far we could scale the algorithm up. This means that there could be a linear or exponential implementation with better accuracy, but it just can't be simulated classically. As quantum hardware becomes more and more advanced, we hope that we will be able to see how the accuracy of the algorithm changes with more operations and becomes more practical for real-world use. Thank you.